working on the Ford Explorer again, and we're fixing the mistake I made last time I was working in here. So the last time, the last video where we were working on the Ford Explorer, we were working on the stuck steering, and what happened was we did not secure the steering wheel to keep it from spinning around an infinite number of times, and well, we went past the maximum number of times to spin the steering wheel, which was a lot, to be honest. So today what we're going to do is we're going to take this steering wheel apart, we're going to take the steering wheel apart, get to that clock spring, swap it out, talk a little, about, a little bit about what a clock spring does and how we could tell this one was wrong, and then put the new part in. Now before we get too far into this, we're going to want to disconnect the negative terminal off this battery post between 15 and 30 minutes before we start taking apart the airbag. This is a safety precaution to prevent the airbag from accidentally deploying from any type of charged up capacitors that may still have inner, they may still have electricity in them when we start taking apart the airbag from the steering wheel. So just as a precaution, we're going to remove this uh, negative post with a 10 millimeter socket, take that and put it off to the side so that there's no accidental contact of that negative negative lead to the negative post. Now we're just going to wait, uh, like I said, about 15 or 30 minutes before we start taking things apart just to make sure we're absolutely uh, not discharging that airbag. Okay, now that we're back inside the car, we're going to talk a little bit about why I think this clock spring has gone bad um, before we start ripping it apart. Last time I was working on this car, what we were doing was we were fixing the steering. I know that while fixing the steering, I spun the steering wheel in one direction too many times. And I didn't think about that until after the fact when we were test driving it, my wife was driving the car and we heard a pop from inside the steering shaft and the airbag light immediately came on. That's the first thing I thought of was something's wrong with the clock spring to cause the airbag light to come on because I knew I had hyperextended. The second thing that happened was while we were driving, we could no longer use the steering wheel controls and we could no longer set cruise control. That was a dead giveaway that something had gone wrong because the steering wheel was no longer lighting up and it was no longer responding to any of the control inputs from the steering wheel or cruise control. So what we're going to do is we're going to start to disassemble it and then we're going to replace it with this new clock spring. Now there's going to be a link to this clock spring down in the description. This is a clock spring that I bought for Rock Auto for the 2014 Ford Explorer without heated steering. I have no idea why but for some reason if you have a Ford Explorer with heated steering, it's $40 cheaper. So if someone can tell me in the comments whether or not these are the same part, I'll update the link with the other one. Uh, otherwise, I got the one without heated steering at a premium. To get this in there, we gotta start taking this airbag apart, taking the steering wheel out, and for that, we're gonna get started. First thing you have to do to get to this clock spring is take this airbag out. To do that, what we're gonna do is go in two little holes on either side of the steering wheel just behind the steering wheel control, take a screwdriver and push it into that hole. I'm gonna show you what this looks like inside the steering wheel after I do this, but for the time being, you push this spring and you pull the steering, steering the airbag out at the same time. And you, like I said, you have to do it blind. Yeah, and you feel, you feel it give. And then you gotta do it on the other side. All right, there you go. So there is the airbag out. I'm gonna get you in a little closer so you can see what we're working with. So with the airbag out, what we're gonna to wanna to do is grab these pins right here you can see one connector here, one connector here, and to grab those, you just push on the sides like this. You push in the two clips, and you wiggle them loose, like that and like that. And there's your airbag. Now, when you put your airbag, when you put when you store your airbag, um, I like to treat it like it's loaded. So we're going to treat this end like the loaded end, and place it down somewhere like this, so that it doesn't deploy and shoot off. Because you see those two spikes right there. That would suck if it shot off like that and then this became a projectile. So we're gonna store it just like this on the floor over here. Now real quickly, I wanna show you what it looks like. This, this spring right here is the one we moved earlier. So you go in through this hole on the side and you can just push it with your screwdriver like that. So you take your screwdriver, you put it in here on the hole right there, push it in, straight as an arrow. You see it touches the spring here and then that wire moves. And that's what holds that steering, that airbag in place. So you do it on one side and then the other, and that's the spring that holds that airbag in on that little spike. We'll come back to that later, but I just wanted to show you 
how that spring moves and holds in the airbag because it's a lot easier to imagine what you're trying to do when you can see it from the inside. Now we've got the airbag disconnected. We're gonna go ahead and start with a T47 bit and take off this steering nut right here. So get on there with that T47. Okay, cool. Now it's gonna be on there pretty tough. So it's gonna fight you to get it off, but we got it off on there with just our little, our little socket driver. So there's that big bolt right there, come out. And then we should be able to take the steering wheel. It's really loose. Just pull it right out of there. Now this steering wheel is keyed. It's got a hex in there. And let's just take this connector off the top for the steering wheel controls. And our steering wheel should be free. So you can see we just need to make sure that our hex, our, our hexagon there fits on with the hexagon in there. We just don't want to lose any kind of orientation on that steering wheel. We can see the trim pieces that we got to take off. Take this top trim piece off. Now we can see our clock spring. So now it's a good time to compare the new part to the old part. So you can see here's the new part, and how it's going to fit in there with the old part. So we're looking for one, two, three, four, maybe five fasteners to come out of this thing. So we got to take this bottom trim piece off. To get that bottom trim piece off, you need to get your seven millimeter socket, get these two seven millimeter bolts off the front. There's one over here on the left hand side and then one matching it on the right hand side. It's right here under the adjustment lever for the tilt steering. So just get up in there, feel around, you'll feel it there right next to the lever for the adjust, uh, right next to the lever for the tilt steering. So there's both out and that bottom trim piece moves out of the way and now we can see all of our fasteners one two three and then a fourth one way way back here all right now that we got the uh now that we got the trim pieces out of the way we're gonna come to the bottom and get this electrical connector it's got a little tab up here so we're gonna push that tab in pull that out so there's our connector to the bottom to connect the clock spring to the steering wheel controls and then we've got our t10 screwdriver we're gonna start taking out those t10 bolts that hold in the clock spring so there's one two three now this one only this one only had three the other one has four bolt holes in it but the new part only looks like it has four bolt holes in it but this one says has three screws and it looks like it's coming out okay so there is the clock spring you can see where it connects into the steering here and where the pins connect in here and it doesn't sound very happy it sounds pretty frustrating it's uh it's real clicky it's real loud and that's probably that torn ribbon in there from where I hyperextended it. Let's put this new clock spring in, put it in, it's just the reverse. We're gonna line this pin up here, right here. With this pin right here, it's gonna help guide it in place. And then we can connect this connector on the bottom. We're gonna put our three screws back in start with this one up top because it's easy to get to it's going to hold it in place there's one two is over here and three is to the bottom right here right about the three o'clock position all right there we go before i go tearing this thing out what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to hook up my steering wheel hook up my battery to make sure that i've got my steering wheel functionality back in before i finish the installation and plug the airbag in and pull this pin to actually get this clock spring working. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go plug in my battery uh, and come back in order to plug in my steering wheel and just check that my steering wheel functionality is back once I plug it in. All right, I'll be right back after I plug in the battery. We're back in the car. We're just going to pull this steering wheel out a little bit, give ourselves a little bit of room. And we're not going to put anything back together until after we've tested the steering wheel functionality. Grab my steering wheel here, lightly set it on the steering shaft, pull my connector through a little bit so I got some slack. I'm going to plug it in there. So with the steering wheel plugged in, I'm going to go ahead and power up the car and we're going to test out steering wheel functionality. Okay, so.
Okay, so we have steering wheel power, we have lights on the steering wheel, and there we go. We've now got steering wheel functionality, but we still have an airbag code that we might have to clear out later. However, steering wheel functionality is back, and that airbag code might go away once we actually plug the airbag in. So what I'm going to do is unplug everything again. Now that we've proven out that the clock spring replacement actually fixed our steering wheel functionality, we will unplug the battery, unplug the steering wheel, and let's put everything back in. So I'll stop recording again, unplug the battery again, unplug the steering wheel, and we'll start assembling everything uh, for the final time. Now that we've got the battery plugged back in, uh, we're going to go ahead and start reassembling everything. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take these bolts from the bottom for the bottom trim piece on the steering wheel, push those up real high and try to get those lined up. Okay, that's one. Now I'm doing this blind because I'm doing it sitting in the driver's seat. So if you're doing this from outside the car, it may be a little bit easier, but this is the easiest way for me to film and work on at the same time. So that's why I'm doing it like this. But like I said, you might actually have a easier time if you do this from outside the car, looking up underneath the steering wheel, because there's plenty of room down there if you scoot the seat all the way back. So that bottom trim piece is in there nice and tight. I'm gonna go ahead and take the top trim piece right here and line it up and here's clips on the sides and the front. So once you line those clips up and just clamp them into place, you'll see that everything lines up and clips down except for for some reason the back ones but all right there we go so everything's clapped down into place and now we can attach the steering wheel with the trim pieces on i push the steering wheel uh i search the steering column all the way back so i can pull the airbag connectors through and i'm going to pull my pull tab through and once again i've got my steering wheel lined up with my steering nut, and my steering nut has that bump on top to tell me where up is. So now that I've got everything in here, I can connect it, I can, I can pull my pin out, and connect my steering wheel controls there, and then I just need to get my steering wheel nut started. And this steering wheel nut, uh, I'm gonna get it started, and then we're gonna come back and torque it down to 45 to 55 foot pounds um, that's the that's the range of torque that you want to put on this nut I'm probably going to aim for the bottom of 45 foot pounds for this bolt so I'll get my torque wrench and get that uh, get that torque down and come back to connect the airbags now that we got the steering wheel torqued down it's time to connect our airbags and our airbags connect the same way they disconnected. We take our gray to the gray, and they only connect one way, so you just gotta line them up. Okay, that's one. That's two. And then just line this up, like so, and push it until you hear it click. All right. So that two click with that two springs on either side, and now we're good to go. All right, let's go plug that battery in, and then uh, we'll see how everything works. So we're back in the car, we've got that battery plugged back in, and we're gonna turn it on for the first time. So to review, what we had is we had a broken clock spring that had been hyperextended, and we replaced it with a working clock spring. We checked out the steering wheel functionality, but we haven't been able to see if that fixed the airbag light on our steering wheel. That might not be able to fix just by simply changing out the clock spring. That might be an airbag code that has to be reset by other means, but at least this way we get our cruise control back and we get our steering wheel, wheel controls back. So let's go ahead and power on the car. <laughs> okay, okay. Great news. So not only do we have our steering wheel controls back, but the airbag light is off. So we no longer have an airbag light. 
part of that might be because we disconnected the battery and reconnected the battery so there's a chance that that airbag light comes back as the computer modules start to boot on after having the battery disconnected but for the time being it looks like it's not there and previously when i disconnected the battery and reconnected the battery that airbag light was consistent every time i plugged the battery back in so for the time being it looks like we fixed that because now the car can read the airbag where previously because the clock spring was broken it couldn't it didn't know there was an airbag connected so it thought that was just an open circuit but by fix by replacing the clock spring it looks like we fixed both the airbag light and we've got our steering wheel controls back so i'd say that's an awesome fix i'm so stoked that that one part fixed it now that's a very expensive part so there are other things to check first before you start swapping out clock springs because at 180 dollars that's not something i'd start with so if you have an airbag light or you're losing steering wheel controls definitely check other things first but if it comes down to it and you know it's your clock spring like i did because i knew that's what i broke uh, that 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 fixed all of the problems I was having. So I really hope you found this helpful. If you did, please like it. Leave me a comment below letting me know, um, letting me know what I could have done better if you have any questions about what I did. And consider subscribing to the channel because we're typically working on this Ford Explorer a lot. It's some of the most popular content on our channel right now. And if you have a Ford Explorer and want to follow along to see what else we end up doing with it, please consider subscribing so you get those notifications. So thanks again for coming along and watching this video. We'll see y'all next time. Bye now.